So we are going to start the final segment of the seventh international conference on real estate management and valuation, the real estate talk. We have esteemed panel of experts here today to discuss a timely and an exciting theme, which is prop tech and modern real estate business. And during these sessions, experts from various sectors will come together to delve into our conference theme. We look forward to a meaningful discussion that bridges the gap between theory and practice in the real estate industry. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming our moderator and our distinguished panelist. I take great honor I take great honor in ad inviting our moderator of the day, Dr. Chamira Udavatta. Dr. Udavatta graduated from the University of Moratua and is now a senior lecturer attached to Department of Real Estate Management at the University of Sri Jayawardenepura. His teaching subjects are building construction, construction technology, building pathology, and cost estimation. He has published interdisciplinary projects in a variety of outlets and received numerous awards, including the President's Award for Scientific Publication in 2018, President's Award for the Most Outstanding Research in 2021, Gold Medalist, PhD thesis competition in 2019, Top 50 Research Award in the year 2018, the SLIA Research and Publication Award for the year 2019 and 2020, SLIA Research Award 2020, and the Best Paper Award by the Global Academic Research Institute in 2017, etc. And in this year, he was awarded as the Young Innovator of the Year for his extensive contribution of new innovations in the field of construction and real estate. He also currently acts as the director of the UBL of University of Sri Jayawardenepura. Dr. Chami Rudavatta, it's been a great pleasure to have you here today. Please take your seat in the stage. Now I would like to respectfully invite our panelist, Dr. Upuli Pereira. Dr. Upuli Pereira began her academic career at the University of Sri Jayawardenepura in 2002 after earning her BSc in Estate Management and Valuation. Over the years, she achieved a Master of Engineering in Urban Degree from the University of Tokyo in 2008 and a PhD in Urban and Regional Studies from the University of Birmingham in 2018. Her research interests include real estate market inefficiencies, sustainable human settlements, and valuation methods. Currently, she is involved in research projects related to sustainable urban regeneration in Colombo and adopting discounted cash flow valuation models for investment properties in Sri Lanka. Dr. Pereira holds corporate membership in the Institute of Town Planners in Sri Lanka, is a finalist of the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants in the UK, and a life member of the Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science. She has contributed to various consultancy projects and feasibility studies, including those related to Hambantote involuntary resettlement, integration of urban agriculture into urban planning in the Western province, traffic surveys for the Greater Colombo Urban Transport Development Project, and the development of a service quality management model for multimodal transportation in Markobura. In 2016, she represented as one of the delegates at the Chicago Forum on Global Cities. Currently, Dr. Pereira serves as the senior lecturer and the director of the Center for Real Estate Studies in the University of Sri Jayawardenepura. Dear Madam, we are honored to have your presence today. Please take your state seat at the stage. Next, please join with me in welcoming Mr. Enoch Pereira. Mr. Enoch Pereira is the Chief Operating Officer at John Kills Properties and a sen Senior Vice President of John Kills Holdings PLC. 
Mr. Enoch has a Master of Business Administration from Postgraduate Institute of Management affiliated to the University of Sri Jayadanpura and is currently reading for Master of Law in International Business at Cardiff Metropolitan University, United Kingdom. He is also an associate member of Chartered Institute of Management Accountants and Mr. Enoch is an executive committee member of the Condominium Developers Association of Sri Lanka. With his multidimensional exposure in venture capital, property management and development, and experience as a consultant in the real estate industry, he joined the John Keynes Holdings Property Group in 2006. Current projects include Cinnamon Life Integrate Resort with an 800-room five-star hotel and Trizen with 891 apartments. Mr. Enoch Ferreira, this invitation goes out to you to take your seat at the stage. Next, I would like to invite our panelist, architect Nilesh De Silva. As the managing director of the leading architectural firm, Kahavita De Silva and Associates Private Limited, architect Nilesh De Silva is an esteemed industry veteran with more than 25 years of leadership experience in architecture spanning both domestic and international realms. He has led a diverse range of projects, including award-winning designs. Key highlights of his career include consistently implements innovative approaches in architectural projects. He has demonstrated mastery in construction techniques, delivering solutions that drive customer satisfaction and loyalty. Nilesh is a proven mentor and trainer, adept at fo fostering and shared vision within teams he creates and works with. He has diverse expertise, inculcating new architectural styles with the traditional ones. He's also a member of the prestigious architectural organizations, including the Sri Lanka Institute of Architects, Royal Institute of British Architects, American Institute of Architects, and the Royal Australian Institute of Architects. Among his remarkable projects are the US Embassy Compound in Colombo, Sri Lanka, and the acclaimed National Performing Arts Center, to name just a few. He has numerous accolades, including International Asia Pacific Property Award and SLIA Awards. Nilesh's commitment to innovation, quality, and his impressive portfolio makes him a prominent figure in the field of architecture. He has been a keynote speaker representing Sri Lanka in the United Kingdom, promoting tourism and investment. Architect Nilesh De Silva, it is an honor to have you today. Please take your seat at the stage. Last but not least, we have Mr. Kiel Van Doren. I hope I pronounce your name correctly. The Chief Executive Officer from MVO Private Limited. Mr. Kiel, the founder of MVO, is an accomplished entrepreneur with a background in economics and law from the University of Antwerp, Belgium, and IECS in Strasbourg, France. With years of experience in the global construction industry, Kiel has honored his skills, including keen attention to detail and demanding perfection that have been instrumental in his work at MVO. Kiel, together with his team at MVO, builds 21st century luxury villas all around Sri Lanka that adhere to the latest European standards and incorporate clever solutions and technologies that drastically increase the living, com living comfort of in him inhabitants. Mr. Keel, stage is yours, and we are very honored to have you here. So without delaying any further, I'll be handing over the session to our moderator, Dr. Chamira Udavakta. Dear sir, the session is over to you. Uh, thank you, Divya. So let's, let's talk. Uh, today, this is our last uh, segment after having series of discussions in the uh, same venue, as well as at the new. Uh, so this year, uh, theme of the conference is smart real estate, and also we have this sub theme of uh, having technological integration. I know that uh, we are a bankrupt country, 
having 2,500 years old of history and centuries of colonizations. There is a way that we uh, handle technological advancement. Sometimes we uh, do certain over celebrations. Uh, sometimes we uh, tend to wrap certain things in different paper and look it at it in a different angle. So based on that concept that how we manage technology, how we integrate that technology into anything. And we develop this concept uh, to discuss how the technological advancement or technological integration into the real estate business and what are the repercussions, what are the challenges and how we move forward. So that's why we uh, developed this theme called prop tech, property technology. So which is not only the technology we just you showcase the property, but also the technology you use to develop the property. Uh, so we crafted this talk with series of discussions. That's how we came up with this crew. You can see certain members are academics, certain members are practitioners, and certain members are uh, real estate key stakeholders. So let's start with the academia. This we'll, we'll talk uh, uh, how this technology should evolve and what are the challenges. Uh, Dr. Puli, uh, can you elaborate uh, about these new challenges? Um, I think, uh, thank you, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chamira. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so I think before we move on to challenges, it's really important that we understand uh, this idea of prop tech. Um, I mean, as academic, we always want to deconstruct ideas. And uh, I mean, when you look at this idea of prop tech, uh, I think it is just a modern consciousness. But if you really look at our civilization, technology has always been uh, part of our life, even uh, earlier than the civilization. So this, uh, this combination of uh, technology and human lives have been uh, nothing new about it. It's just uh, per se that has been happening over the years. But when you look at this, um, this idea of uh, prop tech, uh, the, the modern consciousness. So in, in 20s, uh, in mid 20s to, you know, the first quarter of 21st century, we see this, uh, the gradual progression of the computer machines and intelligence and certain development of these technologies that has happening in the name of uh, could be AI or Internet of Things or things like that. So even though as a com even though it's a common phenomenon uh, that has been happening uh, but what is the difference between these two uh, sets of ideas is that the the modern consciousness of this prop tech has this what you call the information or data uh, so that's that's the uh, the difference that uh, we can see the the technology that we had before which which was already part of our life and um, the, the prop tech that we are talking about so it can be uh, you know the real time data or it can be the uh, you know the the historic data so if if i put it like a very like a very simple analogy earlier we had just the hardware now we have the hardware and the software uh, so because we we heard that yesterday that in the keynote speech also it says that data and information is the next level of wealth that we are talking about it's not really the, uh, the 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 monetary or the money that is that is really going to be wealth um, so having uh, said that i mean um, the the implications that we see before coming to uh, these uh, ideas are that uh, one thing is i mean when we say uh, you know these uh, technologies you have these things like ai uh, artificial intelligence or, or internet of things which really informs you know the the functionality uh, of buildings or uh, you know to certain uh, you know groups of outsiders who are occupying these buildings or you have like um, or you know like real estate tokenization uh, nfts um, and uh, smart transactions and you have all sorts of technologies like uh, green technologies and legal technology so all the, the fintech everything is quite associated with uh, this prop tech uh, landscape and um, the implications and the challenges uh, would be for my understanding and my observation is that uh, firstly uh, it's going to uh, you know um, the it's going to actually it's going to change the level of this regulation. For example, if you take these smart contracts, uh, 
which can be supported by blockchain, which is accessible to anywhere, any part of the country. So to what level these national government uh, regulations would matter in terms of in investments or, or you know, uh, capital flowing, uh, it is not really, I wouldn't say it can be problematic or it may not be problematic, but these are things that it's actually a kind of a paradigm shift that really change our structures of the economy. So in economy, we say that we have this, the real sector and the financial sector in a conventional way. But what is this prop tech is, uh, is actually uh, depicting is that you have a real sector, then you have the economy, uh, the financial sector, and on top of the real sector, you also have a digital real sector. For example, you have a property, and then once it is tokenized or you, know, you convert into different digital tokens, and then you operate in a different level of economy. So you have this parallel economic layer. So, so, so you need to, you know, have certain infrastructure that supports even that parallel economy. I think that is one thing. But what is uh, what the observation that I see good about it is that it really uh, well aligns with the sustainability, uh, because um, some of these initiatives are actually um, reducing uh, some of the intermediaries. For example, if you take the same example like. Um, you know, smart transactions and uh, tokenization and blockchains, it doesn't really need a, a bank as an intermediary. So it sometimes cut short some of these intermediary, uh, uh, you know, uh, actors in the in the markets. And at the same time, it really say, uh, minimize the waste, for example, like if you if you take co living or co sharing of living spaces or, or office spaces, uh, which is part of prop tech that we talk about. Uh, say, for example, I have an extra space in my office or, a, or or in my house. So if I'm having a platform that can the extra space can be lit. So that is actually optimizing the resources and reducing the waste. Uh, so that actually have an impact on the cost and at the same time the resource consumption, the optimization. So in that way, I see that it is really aligned with the sustainability aspect. So regulation wise, of course, uh, uh, to what extent these national government regulations can be challenged, you know, in terms of tax policies, uh, in terms of uh, property ownerships. Uh, on that side, but also you have a you know certain positive side of that. So it's actually how economy um, is you know welcoming these opportunities and handling this is the something that we need to deal with. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Pili. I think uh, uh, you have spot on. Uh, you mentioned about another layer. For an example, uh, my my father was a developer. When when he was developing a property, we take care of only the land and the property at that time. Now automatically there's another layer in our business that you have to handle, that is this technology marketing. So Mr. Inoka, you are having a serial background of uh, managing such projects as well as marketing and also uh, the carrying of this uh, technological integration into your projects. Could you please explain how you do it in your real estate business, Mr. Inoka? Yeah. So I have a small presentation. If you don't mind, I just quickly run through. Uh, I have made my life difficult by trying to click this as well. I will, I'll try to uh, skip through quickly. If you can load the presentation, it will be good for me. Please. So the intention here is to basically relate it better rather than me talking about uh, some of the tech when I exp uh, you know, how I explain. Uh, might come different to, uh, from what you experience by looking at the video. So uh, quickly, my aim here is to share my insights and experience on how we have used PropTech uh, in our business. So uh, broadly, uh, you know, in, uh, if you take the stakeholders of real estate industry, we engage, these are the broad stakeholders. I'm not going to go into detail because I need to uh, keep the format here. Uh, but uh, in terms of tech that is used by various stakeholders, I, I'm sure all of you use in different forms and extents, uh, but the sheer significance is something that I need to explain to you. I just want to set the context here before I get to my experience. So I skip too fast. So in terms of market sizing of prop tech, if you see here, uh, clearly it's rapidly growing in, in the global setup. 
and uh, China leads with about 12.5 billion US investments uh, every year and our neighbor India uh, follows with about 9.1 billion uh, and you can see the impact that can create on the real estate, real estate industry you know uh, we of course I couldn't find the numbers on SL because I'm sure uh, you know I'm sure it's there in you know some research reports or it's in some central bank data but it's not in an organized manner for me to tap that so uh, coming back to my point on uh, how we have used PropTech, these are broadly few areas how we have used PropTech in the recent past, particularly during the COVID period. Uh, of course, all of us would experience some of these. Uh, we had to run out sites. Uh, so we continued the construction sites and some of the operations, and we also managed to close sales during these periods. Uh, we, we have done that through using virtual reality tours, and we have used drone footage to update construction, and we have used our uh, cloud-based uh, document control systems for managing prop, uh, projects. I won't touch on all these, but the challenge here remains still the legal documentation part of it. Uh, I will come back to this on uh, a little later. So if anyone is interested on to uh, look at our prop, uh, tours, we are tours, you can probably scan the QR code. I'll come back to this a little later. And I have a small video on uh, how we use drone footage as well. using analytics this is just an example uh, I'll skip to the next one on sorry give me a second this is playing too fast sorry the other area that we have transformed our product is uh, incorporating smart homes uh, and and this focus here is basically on customer uh, side of it on customer convenience safety security uh, etc so I'll just quickly play a quick clip this is the edited version just to get an give you an idea sorry this is a little bit of marketing context but i'll just skip it fast Cooperative. It is a co-working space in the heart of Colombo. And I love smart living because I believe the technologies of today um, has made life so much easier. Smart technology for me um, is a huge thing because I think it makes life easier. It makes life more convenient and it actually increases security for home, like motion detectors for an example. Um, and you know, being able to like control your AC. Hey Google, turn on the AC. Sure, changing three thermostats to cool. Yeah, just uh, getting back to the second perspective uh, on product planning and development, I won't dwell again too much into detail. I'm sure that the panelists will cover in detail, but we have incorporated tech uh, into our projects on uh, three aspects, building design, building service installation, and building management. Let me also on uh, project management, we use tools which are commonly used available, but Aconex, for example, has been very effective for us managing large projects. Uh, where we need some improvement is on uh, property management side of it, just to streamline uh, vacant position management and defect management. That's uh, something that I think even the property managers should probably invest in and um, use it for effective marketing for them. So let me skip to, sorry, on finance and operations perspective, I would like to give you a small example on how we have transformed our, one of our manual systems, customer relationship management system from entirely manual system to an automated system. Where uh, by doing this, actually now we integrated this with our website. 
So all the digital leads that come through website are actually uh, available at, on CRM and our sales teams follow through on those. Uh, the few other object, uh, sorry, uh, few other benefits on this is that we have now streamlined all the processes, etc. Uh, and uh, there are better controls uh, for the finance department as well. In terms of selecting the CRM, I just want to give you some insight from uh, because I don't know whether there are any accountants here. Uh, from finance perspective, uh, our experience had been selecting the CRM. Uh, we tried to customize and uh, do, you know, come up with our product, uh, our, uh, customized product. It didn't work out, unfortunately. So we had to go to a widely accepted product. We use SAP. And with that, actually, we've actually transformed some of our processes, which was painful at the beginning, but it's really helpful. Uh, in, you know, Again, in picking tech, my experience had been you have to be careful on obviously when you pick tech, it could be expensive. Uh, you probably have to understand what are the various capex of X models available and what fits you. So that's essential. You understand also when you talk about building tech, you need to probably understand the service requirements for five to seven years. Okay, so just to give a uh, a bit of background on uh, stakeholder engagement, uh, which is just uh, by us as a developer. Uh, this is how it is. We engage the developers, uh, sorry, the stakeholders separately. Uh, what we need to do is through prop tech, have this kind of arrangement and connect and all the stakeholders. So all stakeholders will come together uh, collaboratively and, and we use prop tech integration to build up the pro actually prop tech application in this country. So uh, this is actually happening, for example, Singapore, they have this smart nation, um, you know, you must be knowing, all of you must be knowing smart nation initiative, uh, which uh, uses real time uh, tracking mechanisms of water consumption, electricity consumption and parking, for example, and that is fed back into a central repository and this, that's made available to the private sector as well as the public sector, which is very useful. And they also have uh, some licensing arrangement for real estate uh, managers and uh, agents, which is also useful from the perspective of real estate managers themselves, as well as to have some standards for the whole industry. So uh, in summary, so how I see uh, the benefits of uh, PropTech integration in Sri Lanka, so, uh, for example, if I uh, take the planning uh, side of it, if we are able to actually use the data that is generated by in various buildings uh, in terms of water consumption, electricity consumption, parking arrangement, and backup power, etc., and that, if that can be fed through to the regulators and they could come with better regulation uh, to have more efficient spaces and minimizing any unwanted waste of investment. So if you actually look at the buildings and see the, the, the size of water tanks, the size of you know, capacities of electrical infrastructure, it's you know idling most of it. So we need to look at that aspect as well. And, and, and through tech is where we can probably you know, integrate and make sure that everyone's aware about uh, what's possible. And that data is very valuable for the whole sector and the stakeholders. Another example I would give on uh, by attracting uh, prop tech uh, in in, uh, in terms of getting uh, widely accepted systems, uh, you also bring bring a sense of cybersecurity into this into this whole uh, uh, industry, and and thereby you know all the customers and the property managers, regulators, all uh, will benefit through this. And one area, as I told earlier, uh, a limitation that we have in this uh, in this country is obviously the legal documentation uh, you know it's a real burden it's not automated and you have to stand in queues and play registries to get things done for a long time so maybe we can even take baby steps to have some data available some market stats on uh, the transactions it will make valuers life also easy and and customers life also easy a little bit and we can attract probably the regional investor type customer as well uh, there are four, there are platforms. Uh, I think in Dubai they use this. Uh, uh, they have a platform through uh, video call and and through escrow accounts that they use with the banks. They facilitate online transfers, 
And that's very useful, I think, uh, before we get there. I think at least on data sharing side of it, there's a lot that we can do in order to make sure this PropTech integration is, can work well here. Uh, so PropTech uh, is the future. Significance and uh, potential cannot be ignored. So that's very clear. And in my view, in order to compete in the region, we need to all work together and, and uh, make sure that we use prop tech integration to benefit all of us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Inoka. That was like a very comprehensive explanation about uh, prop tech. Uh, so he, he talked about this uh, change in the utility and also change in the efficiency. So you talk about this, all the technologies, how they integrate. Uh, so before uh, this technology, uh, we had uh, grand architects from Sri Lanka, people like Jeffrey Bawa who uh, designed spaces. You basically look at the utility point of view, you look at the space, how you see the quality of this space. And we don't look at the, the other commodities like the technological integration. So my, my forum is to architect Nilesh. Uh, you are one of the pioneering uh, architect in our country uh, who is working with a uh, lot of uh, top class projects. How do you handle this new commodity which uh, embedded into or going to be embedded into the building structure and the demand and the utility which is going to be changed in the future? Nilesh? Thank you. Uh... Uh, I'm going to refer to him as architect Shamira because that's how I know him by he's also an architect. So um, when I was asked to present this, um, I had to move a little bit out of my normal realm of understanding uh, where we work very creatively, but now we are pushed into how tech is driving us. So some of these innovations uh, we are currently working on and some I have uh, borrowed from my partners in, in London. Uh, so uh, in the event you throw a question to me and I don't answer, just be aware of that. So what I have done is that um, I'm going to talk about the demand that we are facing now as an architect, then what, um, what is our perspective on this? We're meant to be creative. Uh, a classic architect would sit down and, and, and draw on a piece of paper or the cliche of drawing on a, uh, on a napkin. Has that moved on now? And uh, the last point would be is sustainability, which is now a pressing issue. I was just talking to one of the stall holders and we were talking about uh, double glaze tempered glass uh, with argon gas then he turns around and tells me well you has changed it to triple glazed so everybody's thinking about this everybody's evolving so uh, my my approach is a little bit more technical how i see this uh, so just bear with me and if i'm taking too long just uh, nudge me right so um so when you see the demands and the perception of prop tech per se to architecture, um, so what can we get out of it? We can get out uh, efficiency and cost saving, which I think um, is what we mainly use for, uh, we use prop tech or what we see the final goal to be when we, when we go into projects and you know building smart, building quick. I think the next speaker would be the ideal uh, person to tell you on this. Uh, and then how do, we, how do we maintain sustainability? How do we be focused on sustainability? Um, then how can it be eco-friendly designs and construction? Um, do we use uh, local available material? Uh, do we not have the luxury and the time to do that? These are all questions that usually pop up. Then as an architect, I see that how we present our work to clients. So first it was a sketch, then it was a nice drawing, then it was a 3D. Now we walk through our projects. We experience our projects. We, we smell the, the, the fragrance that is there 
within walking through an apartment. So it's, it's, it's crazy how this has gone and this has moved really fast. I think COVID has just bumped it a little bit, but it has moved really, really fast. Uh, and uh, now we design, like you mentioned, uh, we design on data, which to a certain extent is uh, a little bit um, unfortunate. A uh, couple of years ago, I had a client and I said, uh, uh, so what is, let's talk about your design brief. He gave me an Excel sheet and he said, this is the size of the room to two decimal points. Well, that's what you need to do. Th then I looked at the thing and I said, no, no, I want a design brief. He said, no, that is your design brief. Build it to the, to the two decimal points. Then I asked him why, because these are my ROIs. This is my cost of construction. This is how I build this. And this is how you need to do this. Otherwise, I'm not going to make money and I'm not going to be able to pay you. The answer was very simple. Then you also touched on uh, collaborative platforms that that works really well, if you see and uh, because now um, how we work is that you might have now for us, I have over 60 architects who don't come to office. They work from wherever they want to. Uh, some work from India, some work from London. So now I'm thinking that maybe I don't need to pay my overheads and, uh, and run a physical office anymore. Maybe that's the future. I don't know. You know, so these are the things that we need to actually think about or what we are thinking about as architects. Uh, how soon Sri Lanka can achieve that? Uh, I have a lot of confidence that they can. They have the vision. We have the know-how. We have the understanding. Uh, we have adapted to uh, uh, and gone through trying times. So, uh, I, and it's a small nation, it's, it's not a lot. It's like running a big, big company of 15, 14, 15 million people who can actually manage this. It's, it's a walk in the park if you have a, if you have a well-run business right at the top. Um, then if you see um, from architectural point of view and our perspective, um, I think the main impact of PropTech is visualization. Uh, now we have virtual reality, we have augmented reality. Now we even have just at a press of a sentence or cut and paste modern minimalist of white design, blah 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 pieces. But don't be don't be uh, don't be fooled by that. Um, it is only a nice visual expression that you will get. Little do people understand that um, the amount of time and effort and the know-how which goes into it. Uh, so um, a lot of people get confused and a lot of people now are on Pinterest. So a lot of people have become architects now over the couple, couple years just by knowing and seeing what's there. So uh, it's not as easy as you think. Uh, then um, now we are exposed to extensive data that uh, our clients throw to us. Uh, so when we design a particular project, we market it for the client. We go and tell them, right, uh, a client walks up and says, I've got this small plot of land in Hikadua. It's not on the beach side. What do I do with it? So. We are trained to think in, uh, in a way that, um, uh, right, so uh, everybody's, it's more return on ego than return on investment. So when you go there, you got a nice plot of land, what do you do? You will, with our current construction cost, time of construction, managing construction projects, uh, close by to the pro proximity of the sea, the corrosion, the maintenance, you name it, you'll pump in 100 million for a little, a little boutique hotel, uh, I don't think you'll make that money back. You'll make it on your capital investment, uh, but you, you won't make that money. We think differently. We look at the market, we understand what it is. All of this is data points. These are the things that we have to gather. Uh, 
going doing a site analysis and looking at our setbacks now uh, you know we might have to just think a little bit more out of the envelope then smart building integration i'm not going to touch on that because a lot of us have done that uh, and you also mentioned that but if you take a look at it and see uh, the biggest issue with things like that uh, which have now the industry has overcome is that they will plug and play through RFID or whatever it is into your existing lighting system. So you don't need to change your light fittings or your bulbs or whatever it is. It's a plug and play mechanism as small as Lego uh, and it does the same thing for you. So you don't need to gut your walls or do anything or, or find a rental property while this happens. So I see that as a very significant uh, impact. Then how we design, you know, using building information modeling. Uh, I think that's the cornerstone of PropTech where architecture is concerned. Uh, it, not only, it not only tells you where you are, but it helps to collaborate. It helps people to sell the properties as well. It's very simple, you build it up on Revit. Uh, and when you're doing repetitive designs, multiple designs, uh, as, as an example, uh, in in uh, in Scandinavia, in Norway now, um, uh, we we have an operation where we work with the architect and we uh, submit their building permits, uh, and that's all done on Revit. So you go in, you 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 show your ownership of your property, and you upload the Revit model. At a click of a button, they'll tell you whether it's approved or not. So you can imagine to what level it has gone. So if there is a clash in your downpipes or whatever it is, if it is not meeting the regulations, it tells you then and there. So that, in my uh, opinion, is phenomenal. Then when you look at property management and maintenance, um, uh, we do have to look into that as well. And, and we can leverage that uh, in different uh, technologies that we use. Uh, for records, ownership histories, so on and so forth. Um, then when we look into, uh, let me just talk a little bit about BIM and uh, um, VR. Uh, I'm just gonna read this out because I, I thought that it's important that uh, everybody understands this uh, because everybody's talking about these buzzwords but people actually don't know what it is. Uh, so BIM has become uh, the backbone of modern architectural practice. It allows architects to create detailed 3D models that encompass not only geometry, but also data on materials, systems, and performance. BIM fosters collaboration, reduces error, and enhances the efficiency of the design and construction process, which is super, super crucial. Uh, this will avoid you starting your 40 million rupee house and then taking a bank loan to balance, to fund the balance 35 million or whatever it is. So uh, these things help, it helps collaborate. Uh, and most importantly, uh, in a project or any development of that nature, uh, it's not only architects you're working with, you're working with quantity surveyors, electrical engineers, structural engineers, HVAC engineers, MEP engineers, project managers, landscape designers, interior designers, and this actually brings out all the, uh, it, everybody could work on one platform at the same time and contribute wisely. Uh, a few other advantages that we see is that uh, the advancement of materials and fabrication techniques, um, cloud collaboration for project management, which is like super crucial now, uh, and um, estimation and budgeting. So that's like, super super important because you can do a really nice plan depending on the location accessibility local materials blah 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 whatever it is but uh, you need to pitch that cost at that stage when you build up your project you need to pitch a cost you need to hold your hand with your client to take the journey not through the design and the construction but uh, whether it will burn a hole in his pocket or not, him or her. Then when you look at um, sustainability, sorry, um, uh, a quick example, three, about a month ago, we had a project that we did in Mana, and uh, it was 600 acres. 
undulating and when we when we visited the site we uh, we uh, we looked at all the trees we wanted to keep we were inspired by the shape of the tree which that gives us the canopy that it's covering because of the arid climate and all of that and then this client said right i need a uh, i need a survey done so yeah no problem 10 days later the complete survey was done uh, at 1.5 meter spot heights and a contour survey was done purely by using drones so you can you can see the influence where they map the landscape they map the height and the girth of the tree they'll even give you the name of the tree the indigenous name of the tree which is there so that is the level of how technology has really hit uh, uh, our market um, then my last one is actually um, to talk to you about sustainability which is key now uh, and it does have a huge impact on how we do it so i'm, I'm, I'm just going to i'm just going to quickly run through this um, so technology actually will give you um, will analyze your data for you uh, before you design something which is super super crucial um, and uh, it, it it encompasses all your environmental facts um, then you go to the more comfort part of it which is the smart building solutions um, it'll talk to you it'll control it uh, it'll look after what your uh, what you don't have the time to do it will manage uh, how your lights are dimmed how it uh, and it will have the uh, it will keep in mind the opex of what you are going to pay for your electricity bill it does everything for you uh, energy management uh, and the coolest part is that there is predictive maintenance uh, which it can predict uh, what's going to happen when so all of these systems are talking to each other and it's uh, and uh, from your standard sustainability energy efficiency it's gone into a completely different level we do not have it in sri lanka at the moment but i'm fairly sure that some of the bigger conglomerates will will be tapping on that door very soon um, even the even the green building certification and compliance are now managed uh, and done and it is not like an audit that you do at the end of your project uh, when you are having your design brief with the client and if the right data is uh, fed into the right place it does it for you and most of these uh, uh, it sounds costly but uh, most of these are open source uh, not for mega projects but everybody can read about it you can go to youtube you can check it out that's how, how we learn some things very simple uh, so it's there and it's publicly available for uh, for anybody um, then um, how do you maximize uh, or optimize occupancy that's that i thought was really cru crucial and it's somewhat relevant to this uh, to this topic as well um, so building designs um, uh, larger spaces, uh, consequently lower energy demands. And at the end of the day, eco-friendly uh, amenities, and do not forget um, uh, the carbon footprint that people are now marketing, using uh, to sell properties, to understand your overall impact on your community, on your country and the world. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Akrek Nesh. Uh, I think uh, where he uh, digged into the, the, the idea of sustainability, so you get more efficient buildings, uh, you build more efficient, uh, sustainable buildings. Uh, the, one of the reasons why I was very receptive to uh, our Mr. Keel is that, that you are coming from a different context and you are trying to implant certain technologies to our context is really interesting. And, and we want to learn how we are going to integrate this technological advancement into the Sri Lankan real estate business. So things like uh, modeling, uh, as he said, the carbon footprint calculation, LCC modelings. So could you please uh, explain us how 
you are going to do and i are going to change this uh, whole realm of uh, construction technology in sri lanka sure doctor yeah we're already uh, doing that so we're building villas all over the country um, to uh, to well modern modern standards which is sometimes a bit um, um, futuristic for people here uh, but at the same time it's very recognizable sri lanka is a country full of people who have uh, also traveled the world a lot of them at the opportunity that's what you have being an island uh, uh, when you're an island you travel more i'm from belgium which is a small country dead in the center of europe and we never leave the country which is strange because if i take a car i can travel everywhere in two hours is the so um to continue on my colleague i heard this once i thought this was maybe funny but also interesting is uh, I, I heard once uh, you can build uh, fast you can build good and you can build cheap but you can only pick two so if you build fast and good it can't be cheap if you build cheap and fast it can't be good in that sense that's something to take home and and uh, think about if I can use a pointer doctor it is can we put the presentation on or this is the oh I need to point it there this is a uh... technological issues in a, in a conference talking about technology this is uh what is this integration technology? Oh, yeah, well, okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> so um it's coming or uh you'll get on okay in the meantime i'll 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 talk about my about i mean the the, the first point which i think is important when we when we start this eh? so i i look at it great i look at it from the from the, the the construction background there so we built we built villas individual houses the places where we uh, where most of us uh, where most of us live and this begins at the design process so we can say okay i want i want many things from my building i want this to be uh, comfortable on the inside that is that has to do with many things that has to do with moisture control that has to do with with uh, vapor control comfort temperature on the on the inside general cleanliness keeping toxins out um, uh, it, it has to do with, with, with many things, but then we have to begin with the structure itself, uh, how to integrate that. So we think from, I mean, we, we, we think about when then three generations from now, right? The person that's living in this building, his great grandchildren or her great grandchildren, or maybe the person they sell this off to, how are they going to use the building that we need to think about? That's not, not an ideological concept we re that you really need to think about that before starting your project. So this is, uh, for instance, we, we, use, uh, we use Revit uh, to, uh, um, to design. I wish I can get building approvals from, from Revit. And yes, in Europe, uh, it's many times the case. Um, and then this is now from our SolidWorks. So we export certain files from our Revit to our SolidWorks and our structural team works on this. So this is one of the core structures of our building. We're very proud not to use a drop of concrete, which causes 6% of all uh, global CO2 emissions and is for us an unworkable material. So just like you, you, you know, these uh, giant network server racks, right? Like that, our building is actually built up. So it's uh, it's. Uh, as strong as Superman, as strong as steel, but as you see, it's very open on the inside. So these are our MEP super highways where we can connect everything from ventilation to electrical to everything, to all the all the plumbing that is concealed and goes into the walls. And what else we can hide in there is a lot of insulation, right? Mostly on the roof and in the walls. That means we can keep the climate out and we can keep the inside under control. From the day we climbed out of the caves, we wanted sometimes to go back into the caves and seal them properly. That's the whole thing of building a house is keeping the outside out and the inside uh, inside in. Now this seems very, very um, um, technical, but at the same time, I need to point there. See, this is then that house that is, that is I mean, at the moment being, uh, being, uh, being built and you see what that looks like. When we talk about technology, when we talk about energy efficiency, energy consumption, right? Water management, data travels around your building, internet connection is an issue here. We can get easy connection of fiber to the home and then connect this to every room. We need to, we need to look not only at the structure before we design it, where are we gonna put it, how are we gonna put it, and even if we don't know yet what we are going to put that the opportunity and the possibility is there for the future. But also we need to think out this whole building acts right together. So I can say, okay, energy consumption, I need this down, 
right? I mean, we all want to save money, yeah? that's what we look at also. Any cool thing, right? They seize air conditioning is the biggest growing contributor to CO2 emissions, and it will be bigger in the next 20 years. So we all need a comfort temperature on the inside of our building. We all need uh, um, uh, this to help us uh, live longer, be happier, be more, be more productive. Hey, where I come from, we need that also these days in the summer. It's like uh, the south of France these days in Belgium in summer. You think you have it out here. I went back two years ago. It was 46 degrees centigrade outside. That was that's unbelievable. It's almost desert temperatures. Anyway, this uh, um, this is something else. So, but when we when we want to achieve this and build like, for instance, a fridge is made, right? If I have holes in a fridge, that means I cannot cool my food properly, right? So we need to build very tight, and your building envelope is very important. What does that mean? That means your walls, your doors, your windows. We what we build here with, uh, sadly enough, only double glazed windows uh of course double glazed of course it should be triple but there is in the in the near vicinity i mean like like the, the surrounding countries i cannot find an aluminium profile that can support 280 kilograms of glass so these are these are 6126 uh double glazed uh, double glazed windows in a concealed aluminium profile which is with an epdm seal yeah? so there's epdm membranes all around there's much more going on behind the back sealed to the wall and then there's a drainage cavity in between. That means that with a with a geo membrane that goes all the way uh, behind it before you even get to your building. So I dare you, uh, anybody, bring a bucket of water, try to get a drop of water into this building. This will never happen. If it happens, there's still five layers behind to do this. So this thing will last what 200 years? I mean, I don't know, long. So that is the that's the oh, there goes my slide. The the so what is um, what is important with this is what i said it's the envelope that needs to work it's what you're building your building and then we can talk about all these electronic all these technology features to even improve on the efficiency the building is generating itself already and what is very important this whole talk to come to one point centralization just like we do it in for instance an apartment building there is a machine room from which you centrally control something Every house should have that. We have that in a mechanical room. These are not pictures from somewhere else. This is literally standing here in many buildings here in, uh, in Sri Lanka. Hey, you would be, I mean, crazy not to do things like this. This technology is available. It is done here. Okay, fine. We, we as a company, we have control over a big part of the supply chain. It is different, but you can do these things. That is, uh, that is, uh, that is absolutely possible. So this is what, for instance, a mechanical room in one of our buildings looks like. Now you think, okay, that looks like maybe dumb devices. But at the same time, that water that is integrated under a patio in this case will never reach temperatures higher than 25 degrees Celsius. That means bacterial life cannot develop in that water. Water tanks on a roof where I come from would be very illegal eh? because water between 25 and 60 degrees can develop bacteria like Legionella. So that means we bring it into the we bring it into the building through a central point, two central points from the tank connection and from the main connection. And according to the pressure, this will automatically switch over. So that is water control is also a part of home automation. But you can't see. Do I even have a pointer? Yes, I do. There is a manifold here, so water supply manifold for the whole building. From there on, it gets all divided. So whatever I want to automate in water, I can control from that point. And you see this big tank standing here. This is a split passive solar water heater. That means there is a solar arrays on the roof, right? But this is smart by itself because it needs to, it has a sensor on the top knowing what temperature that is. So this will heat your water to 60 degrees and it will control it purely through sunlight. And the only electricity it needs is a, is a, six, uh, um, a 60 watt pump in the, in the pump station pumping the water up. That, that, is, uh, that is it. The lighting control and everything happens from here. So that means these buildings, the lights automatically turn off, sensor based. Off. Well, actually, no, they turn off from the outside without a sensor because Sri Lanka is this sometimes ridiculously easy country to build in because the sun comes up almost at the same time every time and goes under at the same time. So if you say, turn my lights on outside when it's after six o'clock in the afternoon, then you're mostly right throughout the year, which is where I come from, not the case. 
and turn them back on at six o'clock. So this goes with a with a lighting control device from that uh, from that unit there. Then when we talk about automation versus smart gadgets, eh? I like all this thing like, uh, hey, Google, do this and that. You know what I would like not to be able to tell, not to tell Google, but actually my house doing this, right? Uh, so I don't need to do an action. So with sensors, we can easily control your cooling inside your house. With sensors, we can easily control movement, right? Oh, not control movement, we can sense movement or presence in certain rooms. What, do you, what does everybody want to do when it's dark and you walk into a hallway? You want to turn on the lights, right? When I walk out of a hallway when it's dark and I go back into a room, I want to turn off the lights, which is which we often need what uh, six or seven switches for to do that, which we can do by just putting two motion detectors there and have the light dim on and off. So it's these redundant requirements that we are taking out of a building. And then when we have centralized everything, that means we have all this sensor data coming in through hardwired, coming in through one central point, all, this, uh, all these things that we can start playing with this and let this do other things. I don't have the time to go into this, but then you can really do the cool stuff. One last thing also, doctor, that I wanted to say is, oh, can I, oh, I don't get my presentation. What you would have, what you would have seen there is a central ventilation unit. And this is very important that, that, that you understand. We need to build tight and ventilate right, right? So we need mechanical ventilation in the building to take the humidity out. We need to get from 75, 80% interior humidity to 45. And that has to do with sustainability also, right? Because when your humidity is controlled, that means everything in your building lasts longer and everything is nicer and it's much cheaper to cool also because uh, first thing your LC unit will try to do is take the humidity out, but that system does it by itself. And this is a pretty stupid thing actually for being that smart is there's a CO2 emotion sensors in the box. So that means here, this thing always will, will extract a certain microcurrent from the building and then sense if it needs to go on or if it needs to go off or it, if it needs to ramp up. And what is most important in a building, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is all the cabling and all the wiring and all the ducting going through because this unit in 20 years will be much more efficient even. This almost consumes no electricity. Well, maybe in 10 years, there's a box on the market that consumes half, then I can easily replace that. Same goes with the tank, same goes with the items. We focus sometimes too much on the items, but it's the infrastructure, which you can only do when you're actually starting construction. That, and that is the most important. That is the whole infrastructure you put in the building to plug everything in. So what I would advise everybody here is always when, if you are constructing or when you are constructing, these are the, these are the things to focus on. And it requires a lot of work in advance, but then you have a building that for the next 100, 200 years, you can change whatever and will act as it is from these times. Uh, will not only uh, save you a capital, but will also be healthy for you and your, your, your family for now and for the future to come. That's, uh, I was expecting a stand. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No thanks to my colleagues. technological integration to buildings. Uh, so there are a lot more things happening because of that. Uh, for instance, uh, Mr. Inaka mentioned about uh, the point of uh, education project, marketing, so on and so uh, My correction uh, goes to Inaka. Uh, Mr. Inaka is uh, this these complexes that we are trying to do, even I have a question for Dr. Pillay as well. Uh, these complexes which you are going to integrate into a, just a small piece of building, will build a chaos. How you are going to manage it in your uh, large scale real estate business? What are the things that you, you are trying to include into your transactions, strategies, business strategies, so on and so on, Mr. Inoka? Yeah, so I covered a bit there in my presentation so this is a big subject but in terms of prop tech uh, and the and the use of prop tech within us one example that i use is uh, how we applied uh, the smart tech for to transform our products so piles we have that tech that is there as it was later explained what are the you know based on what are the smart gadgets and all that are available could 
could facilitate all that. What's important to figure out is what's really useful for the for the community, right? So we engage in so we we have to understand what's the customer requirement, what's the community requirements, and what would really help uh, in terms of our customer and for them to do uh, stuff in a in a easier manner. If you take uh, you know you know our perspective, you know when you are at office. If, if your maid has to come in, for example, uh, to your house on a daily basis, so you know that's a headache, right? That go comes and someone comes in and someone goes out. So these kind of things can be, you know, just uh, they are at the click of your yeah, click of a click of a button, you know, from your phone. So things like that uh, are, are, the, are the things that we want to actually incorporate. In terms, of, you know, in terms of bringing comfort and convenience to customers. So, in terms of strategy for usage, you know, strategy in terms of property tech usage, as I told you, uh, for our products, is always focus on the customer side of it in terms of convenience, security, and safety side of it. And we, you know, I, I don't need to go into tech, you know, how how we arrange those using smart door locks and various types type of things connecting to visitor call panels, et cetera, to manage all that. And we have smart sensors to, you know, make sure if you have little kids, uh, your door sensors, et cetera, would activate if the door is open. So, you know, it's stuff that bothers you on a daily basis, uh, trying to address that using uh, prop tech to, you know, transform our products is one key strategy that we actually used in this, this whole process of smart. Uh, home automation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nauka. Uh, uh, my next question goes to uh, Dr. Upuli, because actually we are running out of time also. Uh, uh, Madam, uh, this we, we, we all, all three of these uh, talk about these complex, complexities, you know, complexities create uh, problems, uh, especially in a country like us. Uh, uh, for an for an example, I take I take a very small example, uh, Dr. Pili. Uh, Twenty years back, uh, when you develop a property, uh, there's a guy who come by a bicycle, and he note down all the information about the property, and we call him broker uncle. So he just do everything, and uh, we didn't we, we 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 didn't worry about after after that. And then uh, ten years back. Uh, guys started coming into the property with a small digital camera and take pictures of the property and he do some other work but still we don't have a platform to market and now now we we all have sponsors here uh, so we we there are there are many platforms you just search google what's the land what's the property you want to search and you find like millions of stops information about uh, these things and that's very complex chaotic and difficult to understand which where we should locate our uh, business. So my questions, Dr. Puli. So this is not only happening in real estate business. This is also happening in our uh, property management side. Uh, it's happening in UDA. It's happening in uh, RDA. Uh, the data management is not properly sometimes not properly integrated into the the system. Instead, it became like a, a chaos. And not managing properly, how we are going to resolve, and how we are going to res uh, uh, how we are going to uh, uh, resolve this challenge, uh, madam? Very difficult, tough one. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, we all understand that data is, is the problem, and the data is what we are looking for, even within this prop tech, this whole thing. Um, but before I go into that question, let me. Um, give you one idea that I uh, got uh, after listening to these three panelists is that uh, I could remember when I was um, in the, at University of Birmingham, there was this slogan writing, uh, you know, achieving sustainability without jeopardizing your modern life. Uh, yeah, so I think um, this is what exactly we are talking about, you know, uh, because we have this approach to sustainability where we always ask for compromise. Okay, if you want to do, don't do this, don't eat this, you know, don't drive and things like that. But to what extent we can really go by that modern, you know, jeopardizing modern life uh, at a larger scale. Of course, there can be, you know, sort of a niche community. 
But I think this is PropTech is something that we can approach to a larger community to enter into the world of sustainability and practices because we are addressing to the whole production process and cutting down, you know, what unnecessary things, uh, unnecessary defined during the time that doesn't really add to utility. So that is one idea. So coming back to your question, how to solve this data integration, I think. Um, one challenge would be what I, uh, you know, have this um, idea from um, Inoka is that, I mean, you can introduce certain things which actually, um, you know, accumulate certain set of data for your company or for your information. But uh, if you want to integrate it, you need the collaboration. Um, you know, collaboration between organizations. Even before this prop tech come, we everybody had our own databases. You know, for example, valuers had their own databases, perhaps architects had their own databases. And now these databases are converting into, you know, digital form. But still, if you're holding, you know, if you're having silos or if you're holding them to yourself without, you know, integrating, um, then that I, I think the, the maximum benefit out of this data cannot be taken to the so larger to the society. So for that, I think, um, I think perhaps the government or some kind of an intermediary like an integration uh, system has to be there. Uh, for that, I think what is needed is that everybody is very skeptical, particularly in this part of region. Mm, what is he up to like? So you should have the maybe the government can give the trust. You know, um, I mean, th that is where the intervention, th this, as I said, this is a new structural change. So the role of government from very conventional intervention to the modern intervention is needed. So the government has to maybe, because that is the only common platform that maybe uh, everybody can trust on. So maybe the government or, uh, you know, similar kind of a platform has to be there or a system or a regulator has to be come up where uh, everybody can trust and share the data and, uh, you know, execute collaboration. So that can, you know, largely benefit the community, the society, because at the end of the day, uh, everything we should have the societal well-being. No matter what prop tech we are talking about, the fundamentals are still remain the same. So I think uh, that is where we can start. Uh, so everybody is skeptical, but to have the trust, we should have a, a platform and that new form of government intervention is where to begin with. That's my uh, very, uh, you know, quick perspective of uh, this. Let's, let's hope the government uh, do their job properly. I mean, when I say government, not necessarily the government or, you know, like a, a common uh, collaborative platform. Let's put it like, in that. Like this or even like uh, different uh, perspectives coming together. Uh, Nilesh will, will, will quickly wind up this uh, discussion. Uh, uh, so we, we, we were discussing about this technological advancement and, and uh, she also explained uh, why we should have a platform and all. Uh, my, uh, I'll give you a very simple question, Nilesh. Were there any demand change? Were there any uh, perception change among your clients? among real estate demand uh, within this country or internationally like quick answer i need just uh, from your uh, background you talk about the pin strategy and the social uh, medias facebook so on and so uh, i'm asking in terms of these what we discussed were there any shift in the demand definitely there has been a shift in the demand so um, actually to touch on your point uh, now with with what what the horror stories we hear with giving a deed uh, to get it checked or in in any transact property transaction uh, we we either get a photocopy of it and we write for reference only but now as architects uh, we need to apply to the urban development authority and i need to share this information with them so that is a that is a i think that's the first step to what you were talking about it's his privacy, but also uh, we might have an issue with cyber security. Nobody's talking about this. Where do we go with this? You know, it's very easy to get on board and, um, you know, and use the buzzwords and run with it. But at the end of the day, you can, that can get a little bit sidelined. To answer what you were, uh, what you were saying, which I forgot to actually what your main uh, question was, I was asking about the, the shift in the demand. 
Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, Chamito, what happens is that uh, as an architect, if you see, um, now we are not only dealing with the client, we are dealing with uh, property developers, uh, agents, uh, multiple resource of people, and they have got a lot of infrastructure at their fingertips. So, uh, we have to get on board now. I think whole of society needs to get on board mm -hmm. and run with that. So there is a significant impact on that. Uh, and I think it's only going to get uh, tougher and uh, more. But at the end of the day, collaboration is must. You know, we need to be able to understand and process. Process is key when you see that. I know it can be a little bit cumbersome, but it's key. I think that's the... So when the demand comes, those things also need to be handheld right up to execution. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Nanesha. My last question goes to you, Mr. Kale. Uh, we are honored that you are here today. Uh, this, these conferences, discussions, uh, not only for the industry, but also for our undergraduate students, postgraduate students. Uh, since you are from international arena and since you are practicing certain advanced technologies, uh, what is your best advice for our undergraduates to follow? Uh, yeah, I think before before we started here, Doctor, we talked about it. Is uh, uh, get into uh, digital modeling. Eh? Um, um, you you will understand the building completely if you build it yourself. Now there is in the past it was very difficult. Uh, now we can do it digitally, so we can build something twice. Eh? So we can we can model it. In, uh, in Revit and Tecla, in these, uh, we can see where the clashes are. We can do structural analyses on these. We can uh, we can we can do easy modeling. We can see what what I would call building knots. Eh? So these these difficult points where buildings uh, where in buildings certain parts come together, and we need to see how that exactly interface. And then afterwards, we can learn also how this can integrate into a whole procurement cycle, right? And we can. We can learn how we can till the till two decimals, ten decimals behind the point in the rupee. We can actually calculate how much this will exactly exactly cost, how much man hours this will need. This this was something. Let's say thirty years ago was, I mean, you couldn't you couldn't dream about that. You needed to make mistakes your whole life, have forty fifty years of experience, and still make mistakes. And everybody had different demands. Now we we don't have to do this. We can we can we can have people working uh, somewhere with all these with these models in their hands on an iPad creating a building just like they like they do here already in Sri Lanka now. So I think for 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 students in this branch and from where I come then eh, from how I see it in construction, this is the most most important skill for uh, for architects for students in real estate people that understand it even if you are not going to use it in the future you will understand it and you will know better how to how to talk to people that are using it in the future and how to make these changes because it affects every side of uh, construction is this construction planning and digital modeling uh, I hope you're happy with your answer. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very happy the <laughs> fact that you said it to my undergraduates rather. I t I'm telling it every yeah, day. Because so. you have a passion for it and for me the same. So that only passion, like I, I, I want them to explore. Uh, well. I think uh, uh, we, uh, we are almost ready to wind up. If there are any questions from the audience, yes. Uh, can, I, can I have a mic for you? Thank you uh, for the uh, wonderful discussion. And I have one question. This is open to the panel. Uh, now, when you are working on the prop tech and the application of the technology to the building, the most of the case, uh, the examples are comes from the smart, uh, the modern building. But when it comes to Sri Lankan context, we have uh, middle level construction as well. So, what are the mechanisms that you can propose to? integrate this technology to the existing houses already built houses we are in the middle class level where sometimes people uh, the households also do, does not have a good idea about smart technology and all so 
what kind of a solution that you can propose to popularize PropTech in a country like in Sri Lanka? Uh, Keel, you can start and Nilesh can help. Uh, yeah, and, and already constructed buildings, this is very difficult. There's, um, I get this question a lot also, is has to do with other things. What can you do about buildings that are built here already with a single wall and with a, um, it's cheaper to tear down and start, honestly, cheaper to, to start, uh, tear down, start over again than to try to do improvements on this. That is, that is what that is. Too bad we can cry about it, reality is. What reality is? Um, um, we, was there, there was a second part, or how, how can we make people? Well, you you need to they need to fill it in their wallet, eh? I mean, and in their way their way of comfort, and then uh, somebody to demonstrate it, and people will follow that. Yeah. That's uh, in the essence. I am an economist, so that is uh, what I think about the reason why people around the world use certain technological solutions is because it's it's efficient, it saves time. And it uh, it can uh, it, it can get frustration out of your life, and it uh, it will save you cash. So when you feel it in your wallet, you make that decision easily. But thinking about it five, ten years, fifteen years in the future, the same reasoning why people would would put a solar installation in their building is because uh, it's uh, after ten years, looking back, it's uh, cheaper than uh, than buying electricity from a semi-government institution. Right? Uh, I would rather give a contradictory answer for that. Uh, the first generation of prop tape came to Sri Lanka uh, was a bit of difficult to do uh, a refurbishment to all buildings. But uh, the latest technology, we can even do uh, without breaking walls and all. There are a lot of integrations, uh, Dr. Pratap. Uh, for an example, very recently, I have done a project uh, where we integrated these technologies into an old building. Even this institute uh, very recently uh, renovated with these new prop technologies. So I think uh, the latest generation or new additions, uh, they, they can, right? See what's, see, what's important for us to understand, we, we, we say uh, it's expensive, middle income, how do you manage? First, we need to have the mindset of it's not nice to have, need to have. That's super, super crucial. So you have an entry level house. It's cool to go out to a party and tell people, right, my house can do this. But do you actually need that? Now, we don't sit at office, although my posture doesn't say that we stand at office. Why? Because it's 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 good for it's good for your well-being the way you work um so like i said before also it's hard for us to adapt to that market because it's chalk and cheese here you're talking to different demographics of people uh, thailand has done it well thailand uh, thailand has gone into uh, uh, if you see toyota or, or honda or any Japanese car, they have aftermarket products are better than the original products. That is innovation. And that innovation is coming from the Thais. We have that in our blood as Sri Lankans. We need to promote that. So that has to happen. And you can't look at importing everything and crossing your fingers that the dollar won't go when your LC when it comes here. So it's a chicken and an egg situation. But it's important for people to understand, you know, it's need to have. And this has been proven. If you see solar, everybody goes and puts, uh, installs uh, solar. Because so, so there is a, there's an interest for us to do that. There is an interest and there's a knowledge and a know-how which has now evolved. And it's a matter of time before it will evolve into any and every aspect of technology. But we also need to, somebody needs to hold our hand so that we can do it locally. We can do it. And, and he's a pioneer in that. You know, so we need more people who thinks that way. So change the mindset, the rest will change. Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. 
Um, thank you so much for that question because I think that is really valid question because the the, the point that you know does this uh, this idea that when you say prop tech whether it's really uh, you know for a certain class or whether whether middle class or, or even lower class can benefit out of that is one of the questions because we have this idea that this is very capital intensive kind of a thing. But uh, when I, the question was asked, what came into my mind is that uh, while I agree with all the panelists, you know, sometimes you, when you go by the strict definition of prop tech, you can into, get into the prop tech even without doing any kind of a gadget. For example, um, you know, there are a so, lot of rural community who have uh, entered into these uh, co-living, uh, co-sharing platforms. Uh, with a kind of a smaller change that they have done to their houses. So they use some of these, uh, you know, Airbnb or perhaps booking.com platforms, uh, very affordable changes to their houses, and they have entered into international markets. Um, so that may, so there can be certain aspect of this prop tech that uh, really this uh, lower to middle class to any class of people can have access to that particular market. So uh, in that sense, I believe, um, you know, it's like the enabler. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pili and architect uh, Nilesh. Uh, and also thank you, uh, Dr. Pratha, for that question. Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, it's, it's time to uh, wind up this uh, discussion. I, I started with uh, this statement saying that we are a bankrupt country right now, but we are slowly uh, recovering. And he said uh, this technology and innovation is in our blood. That's true. So it's not, it's not good that we always uh, repetitively saying that we can't, we are lost. Uh, we can't move, so we should learn how to dance in the rain, rather you uh, talk about it and uh, worry about it. So let's praise and uh, let's finish this talk and uh, let's think about this new technological advancement and bring this nation to another level. Thank you very much uh, all the panelists and uh, the organizing committee uh, for giving us this platform to discuss this topic. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chamira. As we conclude this enlightening real estate talk, I'd like to express our heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed panelists for their invaluable contributions to today's discussion. Your insights have illuminated the path to a more innovative and interconnected real estate industry. In recognition of your dedication, expertise, and the commitment, we have tokens of appreciation to present. So to give away the tokens of appreciation, I would first like to invite Professor Nishani Vikramarachi, Department of Estate Management and Valuation, University of Sri Jayadunapura, to give away the appreciations. I would like to invite Mr. Enoch Pereira to the stage to receive the token. Thank you, sir, for your valuable contribution towards an insightful discussion. Hold on. Uh, Mr. Inopera, can you accept the appreciation letter as well? Thank you, Professor Nishani. Next, I would like to invite Mr. Dilshan Pereira, Executive Director of Sunil Fernando Associate Private Limited, to give away the tokens. To receive our sincere gratitude, I would like to invite architect Nilesh De Silva upon the stage. Yes, sir. Thank you for your commitment despite of your busy schedules. Thank you, 
Mr. Fernando. Next, I would like to cordially invite Dr. Pratap Kalutantri, Head, Department of Estate Management and Valuation, University of Sujadanpura, to give away the token of, of appreciation to our very own Dr. Upuli Pereira. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Next, I would like to invite Ms. Hashini Vikramasinghe, Secretary of International Conference on Real Estate Management and Valuation 2023, to give away the token of appreciation to Mr. K. L. Van Doren. Yes, sir. Please come up on the stage to receive your appreciation. Last but not least, I would like to invite Mr. Gamini Abe Gunavardhana to give away the token of appreciation to our moderator of the real estate talk, Dr. Chamira Udavatta. Thank you, sir. I would also like to extend our gratitude to our attendees, uh, virtually and physically. Your engagement and enthusiasm have been inspiring. Your questions, discussions, and interaction have added depth and richness to our conference.